good afternoon to everyone i am dr astha sharma i am a dental surgeon and part of tobacco intervention initiative i am here as a technical advisor to cipher first let me tell you a brief about cipher cipher is strategic institute for public health education and research which was established in 2018 with a fundamental purpose of creating a specialized public health workforce who can plan execute and monitor national health programs and public health initiatives for tackling emerging public health challenges cipher has already held about 12 consultations and others uh, back kar sakte hain aap thoda slide then we are all deeply concerned about covid 19's impact on the individuals having comorbid conditions such as hypertension cardiovascular diseases diabetes etc the morbidity and mortality rate is high among those who are suffering from such conditions tobacco is the most important preventable risk factor for all the ncds in this context we present the webinar on tobacco cessation during covid-19 pandemic a need and an opportunity this webinar is the third in the series of webinars we are planning next two months now i would like to introduce dr sonu goel He is the director of RCTC Chandigarh, professor in Department of Community Medicine and School of Public Health, PGIMR Chandigarh. He is a medical doctor with MD in Community Medicine and has 17 years of rich experience in public health and health management. He is an alumnus of John Hopkins School of Public Health, Baltimore, U.S. and Maastricht University, the Netherlands. He has awarded Public Health Excellence of India by Honorable Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare in 2014. He is also Program Director for International Public Health Management Development, sponsored by Ministry of External Affairs under Indian Technical and Economical Cooperation. Principal Investigator of the project entitled "Strengthening Management of Hypertension Services Through Capacity Building, Media and Communication, and Stakeholders Engagement in the State of Punjab." I'll also like to introduce Dr. Rakesh Gupta, who will be also moderating the session with Dr. Sonu Goel. He is the president and director of Public Health Cipher, formerly DHS and director of Chemical Examiner Lab, Punjab, alumni of John Hopkins School of Public Health, Baltimore 2012, and University of California, San Francisco 2012, as a short-term scholar. Awards and recognitions. WHO award was given to him in 2014 on World No Tobacco Day. he was he has represented mohfw for a consultation in panama 2016 he has represented ministry of health and family welfare for a consultation in geneva in 2017 and has been awarded for exemplary services in medical profession by sbi in 2019 we have with us uh, our eminent speakers dr pratima dr swasti charan and dr vikrant mohanty the two chairpersons that is dr rakesh gupta from rajasthan and dr meera agi and the session will be moderated by dr sonu goel and dr rakesh gupta over to you dr Ra uh, dr sonu thank you dr sonu so thank you very much astha uh, for a very warm introduction and uh, hello to everyone good afternoon uh i hope uh, i am audible so you can all leave your comments in the youtube section if i am audible i can see a uh, few of the things are coming so you can just leave the comments so okay i am audible so um, welcome again so first of all uh, i welcome all of you who are who are uh, attending this particular webinar which is a need of our and we are all aware right now we are facing with an unprecedented unpleasant uneasy unsafe corona pandemic so we not only have to keep ourselves busy in doing things but also keep on uh, uh, thinking about newer opportunities which can arise out of this corona pandemic so it has been said that if a window of opportunity strikes don't close the door or don't pull down the shade it has also been said that in the middle of any difficulties lie opportunity so that's why we are all here friends in this webinar we all tobacco control enthusiasts thought that to utilize this uh, corona opportunity 
to promote tobacco cessation. So we have with us our eminent tobacco control experts and aluminists who have been working since last uh, decades in this tobacco cessation. And today, in next uh, one hour, uh, 15 minutes during this panel discussion, they will be talking briefly about uh, uh, briefly about tobacco cessation and how we can utilize this opportunity for quitting tobacco. So the distinguished speakers, and I welcome honorable chairpersons, Dr. Meera Agiji and Dr. Rakesh Gupta, along with the distinguished speakers, Dr. Pratima Murthy, Dr. L. Swasti Charan, and Dr. Vikram Monti. And I also invite uh, the participants who have registered for this webinar. There's a huge response. We have psychiatrists with us, public health specialists, office bearer from civil society, state and district level implementers and officers under National Tobacco Control Program. So a lot of people are uh, uh, listening attentively to this uh, webinar. And I hope that you'll be able to gain a lot of things to this webinar. So keep on posting your comments in the chat section uh, and keep on posting the questions which you have with the speakers so that we'll compile those questions and towards the end of uh, this webinar, we'll take the questions with the speakers. So now I hand over uh, to Dr. Rakesh Gupta, who is a president of Strategic Institute of Public Health Education and Research to introduce the chairpersons. Over to Dr. Rakesh. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sonu. So we have very eminent uh, personalities with us as uh, chairpersons, Dr. Meera Agi and uh, Dr. Rakesh Gupta, President uh, Rajasthan Cancer Foundation. So Dr. Meera Agi, she is a PhD in psychology. She did it in 1969 from Loyola University, Chicago. She's a behavioral scientist and a communicable, uh, communications expert working in tobacco control internationally. Affiliated to Hillis Saxaria Institute of Public Health Chair, uh, and she's chair of the Union Scientific Section, Tobacco Control. She has served other international organizations also like International Development Research Center, Canada, CARE International, WHO, and UNDP. She's a recipient of the WHO gold medal on tobacco control in 1989, and a tribute for the outstanding service to the Women International Network of uh, Women Against Tobacco. It was in 2009, and the Luther Terry Award for Tobacco Control which is the most coveted uh, award in tobacco control. She got it in 2012. And she is a mentor to all of us in uh, tobacco control. And uh, our other chairperson, Dr. Rakesh Gupta, he's my namesake. And many a times I have taken advantage of his name because whenever he does a great thing, so people then start congratulating me. But he's from Jaipur and uh, he's the uh, president of the Rajasthan Cancer Foundation. A WHO DG World No Tobacco Day awardee for Sierra in 2013. He has been working for over a decade in tobacco cessation. Currently, he works as an honorary consultant in Santogba Durlabji Memorial Hospital and Institute at uh, Jaipur, Rajasthan. He has been associated with all quit lines India has till date and represents India as a member of Asia Pacific Regional Network of Quit Lines since 2012. He has developed a model on systems approach in tobacco cessations, besides the Sentinel publications on cessation. He has been regularly invited as a faculty mentor or a coordinator in several national meetings to specifically address the various aspects of the tobacco cessation in India. He has been a strong media advocate through all its mediums, including social media, and has mentored many public health specialists working in tobacco control. So over to the chair for further proceedings. So I'll uh, request Dr. Meera Adi to introduce Dr. Pratima Murthy. Yes, before that, I want to use the prerogative of, the, of my being the chairperson. And I want to say uh, just a few words. First of all, let me salute the organizers for their near gender parity for the webinar, as it shows their sensitivity. I'm sure you all have heard and read that women have much harder time to quit than men. And I hope someone will ask our experts this question. Coming back to the webinar, yes, lockdown during the coronavirus pandemic is indeed a unique time to lend support for tobacco cessation for several reasons. The social environment is absent, no pressure 
So the pressure is really less. Supply is in jeopardy for obvious reasons. And also many states have imposed a temporary ban on the sale of tobacco products during the ongoing lockdown to curb the spread of COVID-19. In addition, spitting in public places has also been banned by government of India and many state governments across the country has made a punishable offense under the Disaster Management Act. However, I want you to consider this. The one who could quit is the one who understand the danger of COVID-19 in, in all the details, who knows why the bans have been imposed, why the central government did that, why the state government did that, but who knows why the bans have been imposed, they understand. However, what about most addicted, as we always say, the less educated and the economically poor? We have a moral imperative to advise every one of the surgeon fact, not just few to quit, but for a mass exodus. And I want to know from all of you, how are we informing them? I don't see them being informed. There are a few examples which I have seen on the shops in Bihar, no spitting here, no tobacco sold there. How do you expect that the, that the people in the street, the garbage collector, the servant knows the, all these things? And that, uh, why would they then quit? Thank you. Uh, Miraji, can you introduce uh, Dr. Pratima Murthy? Oh, yes. Uh, can you see the screen? Yeah. Yeah. One second. Yes. Pratima Murthy, my friend, my dear, dear friend, she's a clinician, trainer, and researcher primarily in addiction and mental health. She has edited several manuals on addiction treatment and management and has been an international trainer for WHO, UNODC, and ILO in tobacco, alcohol, and other drug cessation. She is involved in clinical as well as M cessation and quick line initiatives for tobacco, virtual training through the ECHO ECO, as well as post graduate training and research in these areas. She also works in for scenic psychiatry, human rights of the mentally ill, and documentation of the history of psychiatry. She is a very, very renowned woman. To you, Pratima. Yeah, Dr. Pratima? Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. So thank you very much, Dr. Meera. And it's a particular pleasure to be here today on this webinar on tobacco cessation at a very unusual time. I think this is a time when change is the only constant because we are so unsure of what's happening almost on a day-to-day -day basis, if not more frequently. And I think it's very important to understand the relevance, the opportunities, and the challenges, therefore, for tobacco cessation during COVID-19. I'm going to begin with a statutory warning. Of course, we know that it's very well established that all forms of tobacco are injurious to one's own health as well as the health of others. However, when we talk about the relevance of tobacco cessation in the times of COVID, there are some things that we must take into consideration. The fact that SARS-CoV-2 is still in its early stages, we're just about six months into the pandemic, we're still understanding it. And therefore, many of the cited findings regarding smoking and COVID-19 are largely associative or speculative at this point in time. And of course, many of the articles that have been published have not been adequately peer reviewed. And therefore, Many of the findings that I'm going to present to you perhaps need to be validated or further studied. We all know that tobacco cessation is relevant at all times, simply because of the extent of harm tobacco causes on every single part of the body, practically from the brain down to the last toes. The next slide, please. 
We also know that during COVID-19, simply because of the behavioral patterns of smokers or tobacco chewers, they can be at more risk for COVID-19, simply from the fact that they very often take their hands to their mouths, they are touching their mouths, their nose, their lips, they're touching surfaces, and therefore are at greater risk. We already heard about spitting as being an important risk for the spread of COVID-19. And of course, in countries where they use other forms like hookahs, uh, as indeed in India, there can also be an increased risk of COVID spread by the sharing of these apparatus to use tobacco products. The other thing, and the most intriguing thing, can I go back to the previous slide, please? The most important thing is that a lot of the symptoms of COVID-19, particularly the cough, which is a presenting symptom, very often can be mistaken for a smoker's cough. And we know that all chronic smokers have cough, which can easily get them very worried or whether they might be having a COVID-19 infection. The next slide, please. In the next slide, you'll actually see some basic meta-analysis that has already occurred on studies from China. This was a series of five, meta uh, of five studies uh, where the authors performed a meta-analysis. And in this particular study, which was published by Guan uh, in last year, you'll see in the right column that by severity, when you look at severe cases, a higher number were current smokers as compared to former smokers, as well as in this, both in the severe cases as well as in the non-severe cases. And when you looked at people who needed mechanical ventilation, again, you have an overrepresentation of current smokers as compared to former smokers. That again, uh, you know, uh, is possibly higher in people who smoke compared to non-smokers. Similarly, in the next slide, we'll see another uh, present, another paper published from China by Liu et al who talked about progression in a negative manner or a worse clinical outcome of 27.3% who were smokers as compared to 3% who were non-smokers. And the negative progression, obviously in association with smoking, uh, is also shows up in multivariate regression analysis where smoking has an odds ratio of 14.28 in terms of progression of the disease. So indeed, these two studies suggest that there is a definitely a poorer outcome from COVID-19 in addition to people being at greater risk for COVID-19. The next slide, please. So in terms of specific risks from smoking, we know that smoking in general increases the risk and severity of pulmonary infections. We know that smoking damages the airways and reduces pulmonary immune function. There is also excess thrombin generation and therefore the stickiness of the platelets having increased, there is a higher risk for a variety of thrombotic conditions, not only in the lungs, but in other parts of the body as well. And we know that the oxygenation capacity of the RBCs is reduced in smokers because of the increased carboxyhemoglobin. Now let's look at these risks and what happens in COVID. All of us have heard that in COVID, you get an inflammatory response. There are what are called angiotensin converting enzymes. You see the figure, you see those green little things, which is the virus. And the virus latches on to the ACE receptors and then enters the cells and then replicates. And in smokers, there is an increased expression of the ACE2 uh, receptors and therefore the increased likelihood of viral replication within the cells. Next slide, please. The other thing is that it's very well known that smokers have significant increase in serum ferritin levels compared to non-smokers. We also know that in COVID, there are elevated levels of ferritin, or what we call hyperferritinemia, which indicates the presence of the virus in the body. And a higher ferritin level may indicate severe COVID-19. So you'll again see an uncanny resemblance in terms of smoking, COVID and ferritin, ferritin being a marker of inflammation. The next slide, please. So we, I told you already that because of the carboxyhemoglobin, there is a starvation in terms of the oxygen carrying capacity of the cells. The virus itself also strips heme from hemoglobin and reduces the oxygen carrying capacity further. So it's a double whammy when a person is smoking as well as COVID uh, positive 
in terms of the starvation of oxygen from tissues all over the body. Next slide, please. So here is a summary of the COVID-19 severity, the pathogenesis. You'll see that there is an element of inflammation which causes a cytokine storm, and that is likely to be more protracted and more fulminant in smokers. Because of the inflammation, because of the capillary leak, there is an increased chance of developing acute respiratory failure. And then there is endothelial activation, which can result in other cardiovascular consequences. And because of the thrombotic condition, there can be pathological coagulation, thereby in some ways, the pathology in smoking and the pathology in COVID are almost synergistic, leading to a very negative outcome when COVID and smoking occur together. Next slide. And you'll also see, I mean, we all know that chronic smokers have a difficulty in smelling, what we call anosmia, and an impaired sense of taste, what is called agersia. In the last few months, we're increasingly understanding that very often anosmia and agersia are reported findings in COVID-19 patients. There is research nowadays to suggest that the olfactory bulb and other parts of the nervous system are also affected by COVID-19. And once again, there can be extreme degrees of confusion about the overlap of the smoking status as well as COVID-19 infection. Next slide, please. So in summary, COVID-19 and smoking are very, very closely interrelated. The symptoms mimic each other. Smoking increases the risk of COVID-19 infection and the outcome from COVID-19 infection. And therefore, both in terms of reducing the risk to COVID infection, as well as in case one gets affected, if one wants to improve their outcomes in a disorder where actually 80 to 85% of people can improve, stopping tobacco use is possibly one of the most important preventive risk factors for COVID-19. And therefore, this situation provides a huge opportunity for us to engage for persons who are using tobacco in any form, to increase the awareness to them about tobacco harm in general, but the risk of COVID in particular, to tell them about the benefits of quitting, not just in terms of their own health, because uh, quitting tobacco has huge number of benefits, but also in the context of reducing risk for COVID and improving outcome from COVID. In lockdown, we know that there have been several constraints and people are not able to get tobacco. In fact, I remember at another interview, people said the only kind of stress buster they have is tobacco and they're being deprived of that. Another way to look at it is to look at lockdown and actually it's reducing the person's access to tobacco and being an opportunity to quit. And of course, we know that there have been a couple of studies recently from uh, France which suggested that actually the smoking may be protective. But there has been a lot of questioning about the single study which shows other effects. And the WHO has categorically said that smoking does not protect against tobacco, uh, against COVID. And in fact, people with underlying disease actually can have worse outcomes from severe COVID-19 infection. So it is very clear that smoking is, it's very important to quit smoking and all forms of tobacco in the context of COVID-19. The next slide, please. So we also know we in the times of COVID, we've forgotten about the fact that non-communicable diseases are huge risk burdens on our society. And when we talk about the preventable risk factors for diabetes, cancer, mental disorders, cardiovascular disorders, and chronic respiratory disorders, tobacco is very, very important to consider. And people who are already particularly having risk factors like older age, comorbidities, poverty, illiteracy, certain occupations, they are likely to have not just tobacco, but other risk factors like alcohol use, unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, uh, as well as the use of alcohol, high levels of stress. And unless these are all prevented, the person can have worse outcome uh, from non-communicable diseases. So this is very important to understand. The next slide, please. So when you're in tobacco cessation, we use a balance sheet approach. We talk about the Benefits of tobacco use the temporary benefits of reduction in stress, relaxation, etc., and the long term or the bad things about tobacco use. And now, in this list, if you add COVID risk, the benefits of tobacco cessation 
and the problems of continuing to use tobacco really bend all the way in favor of recognizing the harm from tobacco as well as the benefits of quitting. Not just risk from COVID, but also a huge number of benefits in terms of cardiovascular disease, in terms of respiratory disease, diabetes control, you know, sexual uh, improvement in sexual functioning, happiness in the family, financial savings, and a whole lot of other things. So the case is even stronger now in the time of COVID for tobacco cessation. Next slide, please. One thing we must understand that simply because there is lockdown, people cannot easily come off tobacco. Obviously, they've been struggling because we know that tobacco, the nicotine component of tobacco, acts on the dopaminergic pathway in the brain, and it acts on the same sites where drugs like cocaine, alcohol, amphetamines, heroin, etc. act. So people who want to quit a lot, and we know from the GAD study that a sizable number of people want to quit, but because they've become dependent, they're unable to quit. And therefore, support and help for them to quit becomes very, very important, particularly at this time. Post lockdown, I'm sure there has been an increased surge in the sales of tobacco. And it's very, very important now to provide help to people to quit tobacco. The next slide, please. We know that the three A approaches to ask everybody about tobacco use, to assist them in their quit attempts, and to arrange quitting support is very important. And this is, continues to be important. However, we need to depend on various other forms because the clinical encounter is actually somewhat less because outpatients have not been functioning during the time of the COVID. So we need to think about virtual clinics. We need to think of engaging the community, informing them about the risks, not just about not spitting and the fines, but the fact that tobacco use and spitting is related and that it can be dangerous for the person. We have to make them aware of the laws against spitting as well as the laws against public smoking as well, the COTPA. I think it's very, very important as measures to reduce the use of tobacco in the community. The next slide, please. So again, it's people need various ways, particularly virtual ways of quitting. Some help remotely if possible. The second thing is that they also need counseling to quit in every health encounter especially in the virtual encounters, people must ask about tobacco use. There are guidelines on telecounseling now and in telecounseling, we must have incorporate questions on tobacco and counseling for tobacco cessation. And of course, wherever people are very severely addicted, we need aids, pharmacological aids like gums, patches, medications to help people quit tobacco. Next slide, please. So we, Dr. Swasti Charan is going to talk about M cessation but I'm not going to spend time on this, except to say that this can be a very, very attractive option. It has been around for the last three or four years, and it can be a very good option to encourage people about the importance of quitting and actually guide them through the quitting process, particularly for people who are already motivated and just need a little bit of boostering or support to quit. M cessation is one such effort of the government of India. In the next slide, we'll briefly tell you about the quitline services. Again, Dr. Swasti will talk about it at a national level. I will only confine myself to talking about the quitline that we have in NIMHANS. We provide services in six languages, in all the southern languages, as well as in Hindi and English. And we cover the southern states. Similarly, there are quitlines in, in Delhi at the VP Chest Institute, as well as in Gauhati at the Barua Cancer Center, as well as in the Tata Memorial, which provide quitline services through counselors to people who call in for quit support. Next slide, please. And in this quitline, we used to have the counselors come here and sit at Nimhans to provide these services. But as a precautionary measure, because of social distancing, about a week prior to lockdown, we decided to move the, uh, the counselors to alternate day working and then we shifted to a work from home option. And when lockdown was announced, public transport was not available. The counselors started to work from home. So we have an IVR call, which uh, comes in from, to Delhi. And through the MTNL, the calls are diverted to the counselor's mobile number directly. The next slide, please. And we have a software to collect the data. Uh, and we make proactive calls, which were initially difficult because the counselors had their own phones, but subsequently they've been able to do it. 
we had to have a lot of technological coordination to make sure that the counselors can work from home. The calls have sometimes gotten stuck at the IVR, IVR level, but we more or less got through all the glitches. Of course, there have been sm spam callers during this time. There were also earlier people who called saying that the tobacco companies had given them this line, that there was a gold coin for people who called this particular line, etc. But there were equally a large number of callers who were serious about quitting tobacco. And several of the old patients who needed counseling also got back to the counselors of the tobacco quit line. Next slide, please. Uh, so one of the things that has, we've done in terms of offering tobacco cessation services is that we've been very flexible in our approaches. We have been doing proactive calls uh, through the counselors and many of the uh, primary users have been psychoeducated about the relationship between tobacco use and COVID and why it's important for them to quit. And many of them have shown an interest in quitting, particularly in the wake of COVID, and then registered themselves for quitting once they have been convinced by the counselors. Next slide, please. So you'll see that uh, if you go downwards, you'll see that normally we were able to answer about 27% of our IVR calls in January of this year. And that reduced a little bit because of the difficulties we had in the month of April in terms of adjusting the counselors to answering from home. But when you look at what happened in terms of those registered, there was a slight reduction in the register, but we were obviously able to answer several of the people who called back. And of the people who registered for quitting, we actually had an increase in the month of April on people who registered to quit as compared to January, indicating that in this moment, is, there is a huge opportunity to motivate people to quit tobacco from the point of view of their own health. Next slide, please. Just a few counselor observations. The counselors also felt that lockdown is an important opportunity for individuals to transform. The virus has given us an opportunity of improving ourselves. The novel uh, experience of working from home and fighting with, along with patients against COVID provided this kind of synergy with patients. It was difficult sometimes when patients appeared frustrated and angry because of lockdown. So helping them to deal with their stress was equally important. And when tobacco was not available or difficult to afford because it was being sold, uh, sold in the black market, the counselors were able to help the clients to quit. Of course, the counselor, one of the counselors felt that a ban on tobacco may be a very important thing to reduce the risk from harm from tobacco. So these were all the experiences of the counselors in terms of the experience that they, that they had during the COVID. And they felt that this was a very opportune time to help people to quit tobacco. Finally, in the last couple of slides, I wanted to say that it's very, very important to integrate physical and mental health. Stress, anxiety, depression, agitation are all huge emotional reactions both to the fear of getting COVID-19, the circumstance of lockdown, and post-lockdown, you know, when people have a lot of crises with respect to their work, finances, etc. And if they are not to go to back to tobacco, it's very important to provide them both stress counseling as well as tobacco cessation counseling. In summary, I'd like to say that tobacco use in any form is dangerous, but particularly in the context of COVID, while we need more research to understand the risks of smoking, we do know that both risk as well as recovery can be hampered. We need to know what are the effects of passive smoking as well on COVID-19 risk. The current challenge can be converted into an opportunity for people to quit. And we also need to provide the public several, several opportunities to quit in, during this pandemic and to emerge healthier and happier and perhaps richer people, both in terms of their health and their emotional well-being. Thank you very much. So, uh, Dr. Rakesh Gupta, so you can take over, please. It's my pleasure to thank Dr. Pratima ji, as well as to introduce Dr. Swasti Charan. Dr. Swasti Charan is well known to most of us who work in tobacco control and he is one of the star performers in tobacco control. He is additional director 
Director General, Ministry of Health. He is MD, Community Health Administration from Delhi University. He is Masters in, he did his Masters in Public Health from Massey University in New Zealand. He is alumni of John Hopkins, Baltimore, United States. He currently leads three national level non-communicable disease programs in Ministry of Health, NPCP, NOHP, and NPCDCS. His main interest is in operational research. He prioritizes public health issues based on evidence and best practices from across the world and tries to adapt and implement them in the national programs for the management of NCDs in India. I welcome Dr. Swasti Charan. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rakesh, for the uh, kind words. And uh, my job is now easy because of uh, Pratima's presentation. We are very clear now why it is important uh, to have the quick line revamp and, uh, and augment during this COVID lockdown. It is, a, uh, it is an opportunity. There is a clear cut connection between uh, the, the COVID experience and the risks and the hazards which the smokers and the tobacco users uh, uh, have with the COVID situation going on. So this is uh, uh, a time to re-examine the priority, the essentials. What are those essentials in life, uh, particularly for smokers? Uh, and the tobacco users, and and it is also an opportunity to to see you know whether uh, people can quit cold turkey as well because we have uh, many evidences which are in favor of this. At the same time, uh, the, uh, some some other evidences sometimes even the tobacco industry back research is saying that it's it's something which is very difficult to quit, and it is also an opportunity to plan for the future, you know, and then to expand the cessation services and also to integrate the cessation services with all other related services that we have in, in the government sector as well as in the private sector. Next, please. Uh, to give you a very brief introduction to the National Tobacco Control Program, we started, uh, 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 we started modestly uh, with two, two, uh, two districts in nine states and then gradually we increased to about 21. Now it is there in all the 36 states or over 628 districts. Uh, this is under the national uh, health mission. When I say that the NTCP is now being implemented in 628 districts and the number is still counting, what we mean to say that the COTPA, the law is, uh, the law is um, uh, valid for all, of, all across the country. Uh, but when we say that we have this in these many districts, we said that there is a provision of, of uh, supporting a tobacco cessation center in these districts in terms of the manpower, in terms of the equipment, in terms of the other logistics like the NRT as well. With the coming of NHM, there may be, uh, there may be you know, uh, um, justification of overlapping many of the services. So the quit line services may also have been provided by the NCD clinics as well. So, now, uh, if we, uh, this is what I was telling you, the tobacco cessation center is component of the NTCP. Okay, so next, please. So when we examine uh, ourselves, uh, ourselves, why uh, next, uh, uh, in, this, in this slide, we, we would like to tell you that we are one of those few countries who ratified the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. And under that, one of the articles is Article 14. We have a guideline that we should be providing a full range of tobacco cessation support and using existing resources and also optimizing available system for a uncertain control. So we, we emphasize the word here, the full range. It may start from just giving an information like we did during the COVID time that it is harmful for your health. It is just an information to giving more information and do, doing some bit of uh, 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 brief advice and counseling and, and extending it to comprehensive counseling and also to the support of the uh, uh, pharmacotherapy. So this is as per the guidelines that government of India is launching. Next, please. So the, starting with the pop population level process, we have been emphasizing through our mass media communications and, uh, and <clears throat> that uh, is, uh, which are essential for encouraging tobacco cessation and promoting support for tobacco cessation. This we have been already doing it through our IEC material that we have launched throughout the country over the many years. Next, please. And in the next level, uh, we have what is known as a brief advice. We, we advise to stop uh, using tobacco, using, using only, uh, only a few minutes given to all tobacco users. This needs to be integrated according to the guidelines with the healthcare system and all healthcare workers should be trained. You know, you may be going for something else, you may be doing some other work, but if you uh, happen to find somebody who 
could be a tobacco user, we should be advising, uh, we should be providing the brief advice. So accordingly, the health worker needs to be trained. It's his or her capacity to be built for providing uh, brief advice. Next, please. And uh, the other uh, intervention that we have, as Pratima said, was the quick line. Uh, which is also one of the advice given by the WHO FCTC that the callers can receive advice from trained cessation specialists. And ideally, this is uh, to be free and offer proactive services, and it needs to be uh, publicized uh, very widely. This is one of the advice of the WHO FCTC, uh, which we can go ahead now. Uh, next slide, please. And the individual approaches. These are what we know that what is known as the. Uh, the Dependent uh, uh, treatment services, you know, tobacco users who need cessation support, you know, who has exhausted the earlier uh, earlier support that the ministry or the government has, can now, uh, you know, present themselves in a brick and mortar tobacco cessation center and talk in person to a doctor, a dentist, or a counselor and avail services on one to one basis. This is the other, uh, this is the next range of uh, uh, cessation support that a government should have. Next. So, and then one component, as I said, is the medication available. This, uh, this could be the non-nicotin, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, NRTs or nicotine replacement therapies, or some of the antidepressants which are often used for uh, tobacco cessations uh, to be made available in this uh, center. So these are, these were the guidelines, are the guidelines of the WHO and CTC. And now let's see how, what we have done. So the effort that we have made so far, I said is the tobacco cessation centers we were opening up in the districts. We were supporting them with a counselor who is trained for that purpose. And then we are also uh, giving them uh, equipment in terms of spirometer or the carbon monoxide uh, analyzer and also uh, uh, support for, uh, for the uh, nicotine replacement therapy and other medicines. Next, please. Then the M cessation, uh, we started with this number, the double two nine zero one seven zero one. And if you are, if you are, you know, uh, uh, if you give a missed call to this number, you start registering to that uh, M cessation, and then you start receiving uh, messages related to tobacco as well as the lifestyle disease, including uh, diabetes. This was one of them that we had done it. Uh, it needed to be widely popularized, as Pratima said. It was popular once, uh, once uh, when we started it. But we also started having the quit line, which was more proactive, which was a person could interact with the counselor at the other end of the uh, other end of the uh, of the phone call. So it it became more popular, uh, uh, more popular than the M cessation uh, program. Next, please. So this is the quit line, the number, which is uh, 18001123563. As per the guidelines of the WHO FCCC, India is one of those countries which carry this quit line number in the tobacco tax. Okay, as a, as a mandate of the government of India, this number is already there, so it is made widely popular uh, popular among the, among the tobacco users. So this deck, any person can call and then they can connect. But we had we had uh, uh, some challenges. Uh, one of them challenges. Uh, one of the few challenges being that there were so many callers. Say, out of the hundred callers, say we may be able to service about forty or fifty percent in on an average to them. So what happens to the remaining uh, people whom we could not service? Not they, they, they could have lost interest in the system. They could have lost trust in the system. So there, there is one challenge that we need to do it. So to do that, um, uh, 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 the government of India was devising how to do it initially. And then we also have uh, uh, India being a diverse country. Many people could be speaking uh, various languages uh, in the country. So the quit line, which was, more, uh, which was only in Hindi and English, needed to be expanded to, to include more regional languages. So these were some of the challenges. We increased the number of centers from one, which was in Patelsias in Delhi, to four now, one in, uh, in Pratimas Institute in National Institute of uh, and I am uh, an enhanced in Bangalore, and we have the Tata Memorial in, in, in Mumbai and BBCI uh, in uh, Guwahati, and then uh, the original BB Hotel Chess Institute in, uh, in New Delhi. So, uh, uh, because of these um, issues, uh, because of these opportunities, we could cater to some of them, but this was not enough. What we did now was the we had various uh, avenues available for us. And we had the social, uh, the accredited social health activists, we, we call them ASHA, and the ANMs where we were carrying out what is known as the population-based uh, um, uh, uh, screening for NCDs. So they were going 
you know, from they are going from uh, from house to house, and now if you spin them for the uh, for the lifestyle diseases, one of the risk factors is tobacco use, including alcohol use. So the moment if the person says that I am a tobacco user, and then uh, the, uh, they are being scorecard uh, under under the form called CBAC, and then they're now we, we have this opportunity to link them to the quick line. So a person who registers himself as a tobacco user in the form which is filled up by the ASHA or the AM, he or can uh, he or she can be you know accessed by one of the quick lines according to uh, the location of that. So this is one opportunity uh, which we are trying to use, and they can also be used for providing brief advice. The ASHA does many work. Uh, they have got a lot of a lot of uh, responsibility, but one of them could be a brief advice. If not, if you are not able to give brief advice to them, link them to just the quick line. So that is one opportunity which we are trying. To do. Next, please. Then the PAC and the CAC uh, uh, are dentists, and we, we have a dentist here among us as well. Uh, we see a very good opportunity with the dentist because they spend about 20 to 30 minutes uh, on each patient, and they are the first person to see the tobacco stains available on, on the, which is on the, on the teeth of the patients. So uh, with the Dental Council of India, um, there is a mandate uh, which is facilitated by, uh, facilitated by the DCI, saying that all the 313 dental colleges in the country should set up a tobacco cessation center. The latest number that we have is about 302 of them have already set up a dental clinic. So we have eminent speaker here, Dr. Vikram Monti. Uh, his institute now is going to be uh, you know, uh, supported by the ministry as a training center for tobacco cessation by dentists in future. So, so we have this one line coming up. So any person, uh, whoever visits a dentist for his other needs can also be counseled or given brief advice or even extensive advice by the comprehensive advice by the TCCs in the dental policies. Next, please. And uh, another opportunity that we have is when somebody comes in front of, uh, you know, a dot center earlier, the dot center will ask only the TB symptoms, you know, and uh, the similar person, if he visits another tobacco cessation center and he comes in front of the counselor, he or she uh, will be asked only about the uh, tobacco history. So now if we train both the health workers who are working at the dot center or, 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 or the TCC, that you know, a cough can be a TV symptom as well as a smoker's cough. So it, well, there could be a cross counseling of both of them. So the TCC people can refer that person to a dot center or a dot center can also possibly refer the, uh, uh, refer the, uh, the patient uh, to the uh, tobacco cessation. So under this program of uh, 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 TB tobacco collaboration, we have a collaboration between the National Tobacco Elimination Program and the National Tobacco Control Program where we are trying to link uh, the two uh, service delivery points of the two uh, uh, two programs. Next. Then the other opportunity that we have here with the NCD clinics. NCD clinics are established under the NPCDCS program, the, the flexi program for, uh, for the management of NCDs in this country, under which we have got the NCD clinic, the non-communicable disease clinics established at the community health centers or the district uh, hospitals, whereas uh, apart from uh, providing, you know, screening as well as management of the, uh, of the NCDs, we also offer them counseling for the lifestyle diseases. And the lifestyle diseases without counseling for tobacco is in conflict. So we have, we are in the process of, you know, syncing the NCD clinics with the tobacco cessation uh, uh, clinics the way that, that uh, the way we are doing with RNTCP and uh, uh, NTCP, so that, you know, the person, whoever reports to the NCD clinic 30 years and above, is also counseled, and uh, and similarly, people uh, coming to the TCCs are also counseled for, uh, or at least refer to each other uh, for the uh, for the for the synergistic uh, counseling services. Next, uh, we also had a small program of lifestyle uh, diseases under the NPCDCS uh, with the IUS integration, where we have the IUS physicians in about six districts, and these are uh, we also have a yoga instructor. In this, uh, in this disease, in this, uh, uh, in, in these centers, and so the yoga instructor, when he was uh, demonstrating the yoga, we trained them to also give them, uh, give the, you know, the, uh, the trainees who had come there, who had enrolled there because of their lifestyle disease for yoga, uh, to provide them opportunity for the cessation as well. So this was also one of those opportunities that he used. Next. So uh, to sum up, with uh, we have got a range of tobacco cessation services. As per uh, the guidelines of, uh, of the 
WHO and CTC, from mass, you know, population level uh, awareness generation to uh, to comprehensive counseling to uh, including the pharmacological therapy. We are trying to integrate all the services available starting from the tobacco cessation center that we have uh, with the National Tobacco Control Program to the dental clinics in the national uh, oral health program or the dental colleges, TCCs and the medical colleges. And we are also trying to link them with the NCD clinics in the NPCDCS and the NPCDCS IOS integration and also with the ICTC under the NACO and also, uh, as I said, with the DOTS providers uh, under the National uh, TB Elimination Program. So this is a range of opportunities that we are trying to do during this uh, uh, during this uh, time of COVID. We ha we uh, we haven't launched any of them. Uh, we uh, we, ha uh, we haven't launched any of them now. Only we were all already in the process of uh, doing it for the past few months. We are trying uh, this opportunity uh, to introspect ourselves uh, and then uh, plan better for uh, for the uh, for the future. So this is all I have uh, to share uh, from my side. So let's go for a lockdown on tobacco use. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sasti. So Miraji, uh, you can introduce Dr. Vikrant Mohanty. Okay. Yes. Here is the introduction. Next slide, please. Well, well, Vikrant is here. She is the associate professor and head of the department of Malana Azad Institute of Dental Sciences, Government of MCT of India since 2009. He is also the head of tobacco cessation clinic, medical officer in charge, mobile clinic project under NHM. A mouthful, my God. He has completed his master's in dental surgery in Department of Public Health, That's a lot. Dentistry, Community, Preventive Dentistry in 2006, and also done his MBA in Healthcare Administration from Faculty of Management Studies, Delhi University. He started the Tobacco Cessation Clinic in 2011 at the Institute of His, and his team has screened and provided care to more than 4,500 participants over the years. He is a recipient of the IGTC scholarship and completed his Global Tobacco Control Certificate Program at John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health in 2019 and also received, what is that, UK grant, United Kingdom India Education Research Initiative for Faculty on Tobacco Control in Dental School. Understanding and experiencing UK innovative practices in 2013. He is also the dental officer in charge of National Health Mission, the first one, dental, uh, a mobile dental clinic project and mobile tobacco cessation clinic in India, the government of Delhi, with a team of about 30 staff. He is instrumental in contributing in operational guidelines on establishing tobacco cessation centers in dental institutions in India. It was developed by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, WHO India Office, and the Dental Council of India. And he played a very important role in this, I know it. He has 36 publications and presented at many national and international conferences. Okay, genius, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for this uh, kind introduction. It was very elaborate. Uh, can I have my slides on, please? Yeah, Dr. Vikrant, you can use your uh, screen share if you want. Can you do I can do that. I can do that. Okay. I can share my slide. Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, you can see it? Yes. Yeah. You can start the slide share. Yeah, I will do that. So, so good afternoon, everyone. And it has been a great pleasure to hear uh, the pioneers in the field of uh, tobacco cessation and addiction medicine. Dr. Pratima Murthy uh, uh, has been a mentor for me for all these years and I've been looking forward to every word that ma'am says. And Dr. Swasti Charan, sir, has been a great uh, inspiration. I thank all the organizers for uh, inviting me on this uh, uh, 
you know, very important session on tobacco cessation during this COVID-19 uh, times. As you see, the uh, the first screen it is the is the dashboard of WHO, which talks about the current status of uh, COVID-19 across the world. And India is clearly, you know, it is good that it is way behind in this uh, race, uh, which uh, you know, which the world is already leading. So. Tobacco use and lockdown in times of coronavirus, have we really missed the opportunity or really earned it? It's time to offer maximum help. That's what the whole thing is all about. That today, uh, we are in an era where you know, lockdown and there have been a lot of restrictions on sale and, uh, uh, you know, sale and trading of tobacco. And uh, because of that, it has resulted in a huge, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a huge shift of usage of tobacco across people. We all are aware of the GATS 2016-17 uh, uh, results and we know that India had got down the tobacco consumption prevalence uh, from 34.6 to 28.6 and there have been many more parameters which India had worked very strategically through its control measures and has seen a lot of change with strong imp stronger implementation at every level. Uh, going a little bit more into the details of this particular data, we actually looked into what cessation uh, components, uh, you know, what what aspects of cessation people had uh, generally uh, talked about during that uh, survey, wherein we saw that uh, around 55.4% uh, of the overall smokers would like to quit and almost 49.6% of the smokeless tobacco users were intending to quit in the next, you know, were thinking about quitting. So boom, I think the lockdown is a great, uh, has been a great opportunity. And uh, if we had a total 266.5 million people who are current users, this is a beautiful assumption, I would say. And during this last one month, we can assume that maybe a few would have got access somehow to illegal sources, but almost this lockdown has resulted in a, this is totally anecdotal. I would say we have 230 million people who have, you know, quit or stopped using tobacco during this one month, one and a half month. So it is the biggest, uh, you know, ever tobacco cessation effort uh, that the world has ever seen. And surely there's a flip side to all this. Uh, people who have, uh, you know, who have quit or who have stopped tobacco uh, without any support might have undergone a lot of withdrawal and would have had stronger cravings, could have switched over to different products from alcohol to other forms. Uh, surely would have been more resistant, would have resulted in my mental breakdown and violent behavior. And maybe or many of them are actually waiting for the lockdown to open. So there's a flip side to that also. And we have to be aware of both the sides because it is important. Whenever we're talking about cessation, uh, we are going to, we are trying to break into the mind of the human being. We need to understand that uh, there are a lot of uh, things that go back and forth. And every time a patient or an individual who's a user needs to be changed, uh, has to change his behavior, has to understand a lot of things and needs a lot of support uh, with medication and uh, through behavior interventions. So we need to watch our step. We need to be careful as we tread on this path because yes, we have done a great work by lockdown. We have done a great job by controlling and implementing complete ban of tobacco sales during this time and also implemented a lot of other strategies. Uh, the, 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 there's a brighter side that we have to look onto, but as the lockdown opens, we have to be prepared what is going to come next. So the challenges are many. We need to do a lot of preparation and we need to overcome them, accept the challenges as they come. And that is how we stay motivated and keep continuing to achieving our mission and moving towards our goal. So my whole presentation is more uh, focused about what we actually at the Institute have done in the last one and a half month, 45 days. What has been our effort specifically through these 45 days, because things have drastically changed over time from what was being practiced previously to what is being done now. So I would just go through this saying that dentists actually have a good role, you know, a very important role previously also, and they would continue like many other health professionals to contribute in uh, uh, in uh, providing the cessation services other than uh, healthcare services. Uh, there have been, we did, we, we can easily do a Scott analysis of where the dentist can fit in and where all, uh, you know, Dr. Swasti already mentioned the early signs of tobacco use are clearly evident on the teeth. And, uh, you know, many a times uh, cessation clinics were previously in uh, either cancer hospitals or psychiatric centers. So, so sometimes the stigma was associated. So, 
right now dental clinics are more accessible and uh, are uh, you know well trained dentists can also provide an opportunity to provide cessation services this is a basic uh, scott so there are a lot of uh, tell tale signs which a dentist can see among tobacco users and also understand that tobacco has grave consequences when it comes to dental treatment outcomes i've mentioned a few uh, we'll not go through all this so coming to what we are and what we are exactly doing so as dr swasti has already already informed every one of you that we have been uh, you know uh, granted the status of national resource center for oral health and tobacco cessation and uh, just this year and we are working towards uh, uh, you know uh, bring coming into action and uh, we have also been instrumental in establishing the various guidelines of the model tobacco cessation clinic across uh, india and we have been working since 2011 in this regard this is our basic uh, work profile that we work on other than pro patient care we also focus on community based uh, programs research capacity building has been our core strength and policy implementation with uh, with partners like uh, uh, you know with ministry and other organizations so we have a very clear cut laid down protocol surely we will have to look into it right now because things have changed times have changed we have moved in uh, we have been moving in and out from the clinical area and moving out of community settings also so we will have to strategize on those live levels also so these have been our uh, uh, you know strategies which we have been following as of now but more importantly what we have done in this last 45 days so the institute molana azad institute of dental sciences has been in the forefront of covid-19 response when it comes to dental services it has been the only dental hospital across delhi uh, under the government of delhi which has been providing services uh, we have been having uh, we work have been working with a very uh, base, uh, you know prepared strategy of uh, managing patients also ad, you know addressing to patient needs at the same time taking all precautions uh, over the last 45 days i think we have screened more than 3500 patients because patients have reported with uh, emergency and urgent need dental needs so we have a triaging unit where all possible triaging uh, of covid-19 is done and following that dental triaging is also done if patients are in a uh, you know urgent emergency care they they are sent to a comprehensive clinic where all specialists are available throughout the day and uh, wherever it is uh, found uh, deemed appropriate we manage the patients medically so the there's the various activities under specifically under tobacco cessation that we have done we have carried out over these last 45 days have been pre screening and management telephonic follow up of our tobacco cessation patients who have registered in our clinics uh, use of social media use of health awareness as a strategy capacity building through webinars and research that we are actually already ongoing and new research that we have started in during this time keeping the various aspects in mind and we are working on collaborations with other uh, partners so mainly when it comes to because see what what i'm going to share is mainly about what uh, learnings have been in these last uh, you know lockdown period so that it is it is like uh, it is one center which is working and maybe these experiences can be uh, can be taken forward and used by others also so we normally what we do every patient who over walks in uh, with an emergency is screened triaged and assessed for his dental needs and also during the same time we have been also asking in case the dental problem has a tobacco history in in that uh, you know in that uh, uh, process we obviously inform the patient that they need to stay quit motivate them and uh, make them realize the relationship between the dental problem and the tobacco use so other than that one very important thing that we have done over this uh, this uh, this period is we have also sensitized our sanitation and security guards and also seen that doctors are informed about you know that they all are living in a stressful environment workplace right now because everybody is uh, uh, scared and uh, you know has uh, various things in their, in their mind so they might fall back to certain uh, uh, certain uh, use of tobacco even because of the stress so security sanitation they have been uh, you know frequently been oriented to avoid tobacco and in case if any help is needed the doctors are available to them if you can see one of the the second photograph actually talks about uh, our, one of our strategies wherein any patient who's entering the hospital premises uh, the 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 tobacco uh, pouches are and the tobacco products are taken away and uh, that still holds good though many of them obviously do not carry that right now so this is some strategy that we have been doing 
other than that uh, we started recently with regard to our follow up of our patients uh, mainly during uh, covid uh, we don't have a quit line right now though the quit line is obviously very functional and doing a great job but the patients who are registered in our clinic we made uh, we have started making a, you know call, we are calling them back trying to see uh, what uh, what is there uh, we have a protocol which we have developed wherein the counselors who you know from our team who are uh, located at different locations like work from home mainly uh, so they basically identify uh, inquire patients about the patients who are registered in our clinics uh, since january 2020 uh, regarding their status how they have been during lockdown what is the current status we also check with their uh, past 24 hour and one week quit status and uh, also under try to uh, delve into what kind of withdrawal symptoms if lapses have been when have been the lapses what coping mechanisms have they used in and they have remained quit we congratulate them reinforce and also check for any prevailing dental problems and following that any information that they require they can obviously contact us back with regard to dental problems as well as tobacco related cessation support uh, through this particular number those who haven't quit we have gone on to uh, you know check what their status is how have they been uh, purchasing uh, tobacco what is the current stage of behavior that they are in also assess the various the dependence nicotine dependence level try to reinforce this message that it's still the right time self reflect and try to understand that Uh, the tobacco users are more prone to covid-19 uh, based on the evidence that is presently available and uh, inform them these aspects and so that they continue discontinue the habit and uh, you know uh, and remain tobacco free and then we close the session so this is a basic protocol that we have been following uh, we have uh, we have made 102 calls but successful was 60 calls and uh, you know this is the basic distribution of uh, around we have been a, we have been very happy with the kind of results that we have got at in the last one month 63.3 uh, you know self patients out of these 60 patients have actually reported uh, staying quit and the various uh, you know they have moved if you see this uh, it's a we are very happy to see these kind of results uh, you know because we normally in a in a average national average has been been between 4 to 10% and with seeing these kind of results which is self reported surely needs to be further verified uh, we see that a lot of patients have actually moved in from pre contemplation to contemplation and gone on to complete action where they have remained quit so that's very positive and very you know uh, reinforcing results for all uh, uh, people working in this uh, field of uh, cessation and we've seen that many of them have these are the various withdrawal symptoms that these patients who have inquired you know encountered during their last uh, during this lockdown period but they you can see that the strategies that they have used were mainly homemade remedies yoga and support from family which was very much there during this time so it has been a very good uh, uh, sign that people have made efforts at their own level uh, some of them had access to nrt so they because we normally cater to patients who are from the lower socio economic strata so main most of them uh, you know Uh, fell back on homemade remedies stress management and support from family we even used uh, some text messaging uh, methodology we actually had developed these uh, text messages in hindi uh, on based on different strategies uh, of uh, the, the based on various stages of change and we used these uh, you know messages to uh, inform patients we had a very standard 60 health promotive messages which were at different stages of uh, the individuals that we had uh, actually uh, sent realized so we keep on sending these messages and we went on from you know that was basically uh, what we uh, uh, we what we got from our telephonic uh, communication and uh, feedback from our patients uh, we not only we didn't stop there we we used the social media to develop health uh, you know information uh, uh, messages through posters and also inform patients about how second hand smoking could be harmful for their family and uh, you know and then we developed all these health education materials which have been circulating through different uh, social media uh, channels so we've we've got very good feedbacks from uh, many of our uh, members and they have shared it further we went on to also organize webinars during this the first webinar by, was by dr aruna uh, who is trained under dr pratima murthy at nimans and the vk and the virtual knowledge network and she had done a uh, you know amazing we had 108 participants during that webinar uh, we went on to also organize the first uh, school teachers training program through a virtual medium wherein we trained for 94 school teachers the team of the mobile dental clinic project trained uh, this uh, and we already have three more uh, training sessions lined up 
we also have continued to uh, train our bda students through the virtual we've been using webex uh, we've been uh, you know the session uh, we have a very organized training of uh, tobacco use prevention and cessation we have a complete module uh, we have been training students through that also uh, these are a few glimpses of our webinars uh, certain ongoing research which has been going on we've almost reached the 6 month uh, follow up stage of our tb and tobacco cessation intervention so currently we were supposed to do the physical follow up but because of this uh, pandemic we have uh, went on we have switched over to telephonic uh, follow ups of our tb tobacco cessation intervention uh, we have also gone we have we had initiated a, a you know a, a intervention based on use of yoga uh, and among dtc bus drivers currently the validation process is going on and the five year data of our tobacco cessation clinic we have been uh, using this time to analyze the data and uh, as i just told you uh, shared some of the results of the telephonic follow up so this study is already going on wherein we are trying to see the impact of behavioral intervention among tobacco users during covid-19 our collaborations are still uh, consistent and have been working on the indian association of public health dentistry which is our parent uh, association of our specialization uh, they have been instrumental in developing uh, uh, webinars and uh, currently the country has around 74 institutions where masters program is going on and other than the 302 dental colleges these uh, 74 institutions where in public health dentistry have active they have been consistently and following up all patients uh, through the virtual as well as telephonic follow ups have been done from these 74 institutions where public health dentistry masters program is going on we have been working with the department of education and school health scheme the mobile health uh, clinic uh, project which has been running in our institution has been uh, consistently involved in training and capacity building and we also are working with the community across in tobacco control there are challenges they addressed mainly addressing accumulated dental needs once the patient lockdown opens up we will have a huge uh, rush of patients who will come in for dent accumulated dental problems so there might be a little priority shift where the patient's dental needs would take over more than the tobacco but then surely uh, there all the dentists who are going to work need to keep in mind the the to the main the core problem which is uh, you know which is causing this and should not forget uh, even even if the priority shifts vulnerability of tobacco users who have quit uh, you know they need to they might the the will to restart the habit might be stronger and even quickly get into it so we need to keep a check on that and surely uh, the shift of uh, you know health systems from covid to ncd and other health related problems will be a issue which has to be uh, kept in mind because the most of the focus has shifted to covid 19 so we need to focus on that also so to conclude i would say uh, covid 19 has been a wake up call for all of us and offer to help strategy Uh, under the fctc empower strategy has to be given more strength the government of india has done tremendous work in control and prevention of covid 19 and we don't need to lose this momentum a uh, tobacco use has to be uh, you know to avoid tobacco use has to be implemented very strongly into all preventive actions like uh, you know washing hands social distancing and should be recommended effective against covid 19 also this message needs to be strongly given across to everyone so to conclude i would say it's not the strongest of species that survive nor the intelligent but the ones who are responsive to change it is time that we have been responding but this whole covid 19 has given us a new opportunity and has given us more strength that we understand and uh, you know uh, convince and work towards joining forces so stay safe stay home and work together to be tobacco free for the future thank you very much for your patient listening yeah thanks a lot uh, dr vikram so everybody in tobacco control should visit your uh, center the tobacco uh, cessation center in maids thank you sir so over to uh, both the chairpersons for uh, leading the discussion sir please unmute yourself all right so thank all the speakers i take up the first question for dr pratima murthy from the director iph bangalore dr upendra bojani and his question is whether the symptoms of tuberculosis and covid are similar and can a recovered tb patient has a greater risk for acquiring covid 19 dr pratima i must uh, my statutory warning is that i am not uh, the expert on tuberculosis but certainly i think in terms of uh, 
uh, you know, of uh, the symptoms. I think the salient symptoms of uh, COVID, which is a flu-like illness, can be present, you know, can mimic an allergy, can mimic an infection, can mimic just about everything else. So I think all of us go through this fear of what it is. So certainly, I think in terms of an exacerbation of uh, symptoms of tuberculosis, that there can be a mimicking of symptoms, uh, particularly cough and fever. I think these are the two cardinal symptoms which can exist in both the conditions. The other thing is, I think more importantly, I think, is what happened during lockdown, the concerns would be access to continuing TB medication and a relapse of the symptoms. And I think, you know, I just hope that in the fear of COVID, in the worries about that, we have not lost the huge momentum we had in a lot of these programs. I'm sure Dr. Swasti can, you know, can, can highlight this more than I, but in the NPCDCS program, we were making a lot of progress and I hope there has not been any backtracking of this progress at this time. Dr. Swasti, can you back up on this, please? Hello. Hello. Uh, can you please repeat the question again? Uh, the questions are two, actually, that whether the symptoms of COVID-19 and tuberculosis are similar and whether a treated patient of tuberculosis has a higher risk of acquiring COVID-19. Oh, the first question, definitely, if you go just uh, by symptoms, symptoms is what the patients complain, uh, right? So, uh, uh, if both of them complain with fever, both of them complain with cough, uh, and during this time of COVID times, uh, you know, it is, uh, it, is, uh, it is true that uh, they are very similar, and we need to uh, look at it. But uh, the second question, as Pratima said, I'm also not, a, not an expert in respiratory diseases. But going by uh, going by the pathophysiology that uh, are seen both in the, in tuberculosis as well as in in COVID, which is uh, with both the disease of which are affecting the respiratory system and uh, and and uh, implicating uh, damages in the respiratory uh, tract as well. So I think uh, uh, I do not have the evidence as of now of them, but uh, uh, a person. Uh, who has suffered from tuberculosis if his uh, immunity is still impaired. Uh, I would like to guard my sentence there. I uh, would definitely have uh, more chance of uh, injecting the uh, COVID disease, but I, I do not have the figures or the scientific evidence to call for that. Now, I think you have answered this question actually partly that uh, with tuberculosis, if there is a reduced uh, immunity, the people have a higher propensity for getting COVID-19. But let me also tell the audience and everybody that if wherever there is an increased oxygen need for the body or wherever there is decreased ability to utilize oxygen, the COVID will attack the person severely. So if the person has tuberculosis or has recovered from tuberculosis with poor pulmonary function, he's more likely to be affected by the, uh, the coexistence of the tuberculosis. The second question is from uh, Dr. Pragati Shastri, and she wants to know, and I think most of us want to know what's happening to the rush in the quit line, whether people are uh, more incentivized or uh, to quit tobacco through the quit line now that the hospitals are closed, the TCCs may not be approachable. Can you give us this data? Uh, you, Dr. Swasti or Dr. Pratima, can you? Yes, what's touched about this that the counselors are working at the 50 percent strength and they're working from home but has the burden increased further uh, let me take that question first uh, i think what has happened is that uh, you know we, we we get a huge number of calls every day and i think in the month of january we counted about forty thousand calls so I, this is only to one place and i think in uh, uh, in the Delhi Center, which is the largest, the BP Chest Institute, it's almost two or three times that. Uh, the point, the problem is that there are certain static number of counselors, so they are only able to take, but as you saw, the number of calls that they were able to take was a little bit, about 10% less because of the various changes and having to shift from home. But I think we had huge success. I mean, rather than not service anybody, we were actually able to service nearly about 80% of the usual callers, you know, which, which was fantastic. And I think in addition to having callers who were kind of making these prank calls, finding out about uh, you know, awards and stuff like that, amongst people 
who could be counseled about tobacco, who were users of tobacco, certainly what was very encouraging is the high quit rates. One can simply argue that they did not have access to tobacco and therefore perhaps it, in some ways it was a, uh, it was a slightly cajoled attempt to quit because of the external controls. Nevertheless, this has been extremely encouraging to see almost a increase in two thirds to, you know, uh, to 40, uh, about 60% uh, of increase in the number of people who said that they were able to quit. Now the issue is whether they will sustain their quitting. Because yeah. as we know, yeah. with, to, with tobacco users, the milder form of users, you know, might have been helped. But with tobacco, like Mark Twain said, I have quit a thousand times before, indicating and if they're addicted, they need continuous support to be able to quit. Dr. Swasti? Yeah, the, 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 what Pratima uh, is, saying, is, is saying is very apt and very correct for this time. At the same time, uh, what we have discussed in the ministry, uh, many of us, although it's, uh, all of us are deeply involved in the COVID-19 pandemic in some, uh, some you know, responsibility or the other, at the same time, this opportunity we did not want to lose. I know it is uh, difficult for the uh, for the call centers at the quit line, uh, uh, um, you know, the counselors to attend to the duties. As Pratima explained, they were trying to do it from home with the uh, calls being transferred to their personal number. That was something which is very very encouraging to hear from the quit line. So now um, uh, earlier also during the peace time, we had some uh, some percentages, as I said in, in in the presentation, that some person percentage of the callers which we could not service. So now we have other service which is known as the M cessation that we explained, which is not uh, as popular as the quit line now. So if we tweak the M cessation, then you know, uh, uh, if we link it with the quit line, if somebody calls the quit line and uh, because of the agent being already engaged in some other conversation, uh, if his call is not being answered, you know, there is a way of you know linking it to the M cessation and an IVRS system trying to register some of the questions which we usually ask for the, uh, for the, uh, during the quick line uh, teleconference uh, uh, counseling uh, can be done by a machine. And then uh, there, is a, there is an outbound uh, call from, uh, from, the, uh, from the system. Like that. And then uh, we, we do what is known as a hybrid model. Right? So that we are trying to do with some of the agencies uh, who are working with the ministry for uh, this kind of services. We have been uh, thinking it in the last uh, you know, two or three days very actively, and uh, we will be proceeding in that also uh, uh, to cope up with, uh, uh, with what's happening and also utilize the opportunity that we have in hand. So yes, you can answer this question for uh, most of us as how ministry is uh, responding to the needs of the scenario that whether it is taking up any action to escalate the promotion of quit lines and amortization and how? Yeah, that, that's what I already said. Uh, well, uh, it's difficult for like, you know, uh, the quit line are, uh, you know, catered by counselors who needs to travel to the, to the call center, which of course are located in the hospital. But if the, if the, if the public transport system is, uh, is, uh, is closed down in the early part of the, uh, of the lockdown, we had some difficulties of doing that, but now slowly with the lockdown being relaxed and uh, some of the essential service uh, providers uh, able to travel now, we are trying to cope up with that. But even when during the COVID, during, before the pre lockdown days, we had some of those uh, uh, clients who, whom we could not, uh, whom we could not uh, service because of the heavy number of calls to the quit, uh, to the uh, quit line. So that we are trying to answer it linking the quick line with the MC section and not the, not the previous uh, uh, MC session, but a revamped and a re, uh, renovated MC session in which, you know, registration, if you say, if you call the quick, uh, quick line now, then if it is, if it is uh, busy, then the uh, machine, then the IVRS will answer you, ask you many questions where you'll have to answer back. And then you are registered in the system. Then when we are also thinking in terms of like, Giving a giving a you know uh, a kind of a, um, appointment with the uh, uh, with the call center later on for that client whom we are not able to uh, access it. and we are also thinking uh, in terms of you know uh, linking with some mobile app uh, for the smartphone users for the newer generations linking the quit line as well as the M station with the app based system we are still uh, in the process of thinking it uh, many of the experts in the area who are working in that. Uh, in that uh, uh, in that area for the ministry has been requested to think over it. So maybe in the next few weeks, we'll have more news, but we are on the door.
there are uh, there is a question for vikrant yes ma'am uh, vikrant as you mentioned in the presentation that registered patients get regular calls and smss from a person get registered and how can a person get registered and what is the data right now during pandemic uh ma'am actually the registered patients have been the ones who actually before the lockdown got registered with us actually we are not running a parallel quit line here it ah. is just that uh, we are uh, taking care of the patients who had come visited our clinics uh, from january to april and even uh, sorry january to march before the lockdown and those patients who required who had visited us for once and twice we are following up with them only uh -huh. it is not for any fresh uh, registration and this quit line whatever strategy we have developed we have kept the uh, the ministry's uh, teleconsultation guidelines in mind and developed this so we and cannot we cannot register as of now it will be better if they go to the use the quit line services the national quit line services rather than uh, coming to us that yeah. would be a more yes. standardized approach and uh, this another part to the question how can capacity building support the limitation of the virus spreading also what demographics are targeted as audience in the webinars uh, ma'am can you just repeat the question ma'am webinars that you hold yes ma'am uh, how can capacity building support the limitation of the virus spreading okay uh, ma'am for participation we normally use uh, for uh, for inviting participants we normally use the social media and uh, our association uh, channels and uh, different uh, associations who are working we provide them the information with regard to this so because we have a current cap of around 150 to 200 participants who can register at one time so we only are able to cater to 150 per session so okay. though we are looking at enhancing the sessions now so that more and more people can participate in these sessions and we have the recordings and which is being shared uh, online like how uh, this also would be shared through facebook this uh, presentations that we have done right now i'm yes. getting a signal that we have to finish off because we have already exceeded time is that correct uh, rakesh uh, yes ma'am i think uh, you can you can conclude the session by your commands and I then think, uh, i think the 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 presentations were excellent excellent i think pratima uh, talked so much about the concept which was and made it so clear uh, to all of us and whereas shasti told us what is happening in the government so many important things are happening and so many practical things are happening and of course vikrant you know he is a he is a storehouse of ideas he has everything at that nmc um, uh, you know the cessation clinic and i think that we are looking forward to really uh, finding all the answers in you vikrant uh, at the practical level at the grassroots level uh, since you are talking about uh, you know you go to the uh, you go to the sites also so you know the real problem of the people because you are in touch with the people and we are looking towards you as i posed my question that you know we we are perhaps treating the people who are knowledgeable about this but what about the people who are suffering and they don't even know why they are suffering and what is the problem why should they not smoke why should they not chew tobacco why should they not be spitting i think we have to inform them somehow there has to be signages or things like that for the common people because the common people don't understand your uh, you know your notifications from the government and what is happening what comes in the newspaper what comes on the tv who is telling who but i think the people on the ground they have to understand and they are the one who are suffering the most because we have always said that the addiction is much higher among the less educated and the poor people so we have to pay attention to that thank you uh thank you meera ji rakesh yeah you... thank you meera ji i think uh, all the part uh, participants who have more questions they can uh, pose their questions directly to the speakers uh -huh. and we have already uh, uh, shown the email id of all the speakers and now i'll request dr sonu goel to uh, 
to uh, to place a vote of thanks for all the speakers and the chairpersons and the participants. Thank you. But before that, can Rakesh Gupta say a word? Ah, oh, sure, sure, sure. No, I think Miraji, you already said that in the interest of the time, I would just like to thank the speakers who are still wards in tobacco cessation and they've provided a lot of information. Thanks very much for giving me this opportunity. So thank you, Dr. Rakesh Gupta. So over to Dr. Sonu Goyal. He's gone home. Uh, Dr. Sonu, are you with us? So, uh, so I'll be thanking uh, the honorable chair, the distinguished speakers, participants, including clinicians, health administrators, public health experts for participating uh, in this important webinar. We are actually overwhelmed with the response we got in terms of registrations. So about 80 people, some on Zoom, some on Zoom and uh, most of them on the Facebook Live, they were present. So I'm thankful to the officials and the staff of uh, uh, our team, Hello. our whole team. Then our Dr. Sonu, so you can carry on, please. No, no, I think uh, you have concluded almost, uh, I think. <laughs> so uh, sorry for that uh, glitches. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I think you, um, uh, I, as you have rightly said, we want to thank Miraji, who, was, uh, who is really a mentor of tobacco control enthusiasts like us, and Dr. Rakesh Gupta, I think uh, I have seen him as one of the oldest alumni of tobacco cessation. Uh, I can say that uh, very confidently. Oh, so I think sir. chairing chairing this session by both of them um, means a difference for the tobacco control society. And uh, I want to thank speakers, Dr. Pratima Murthy, who is a highly learned uh, tobacco cessation professional and a professor in an institute of excellence. So a very wonderful talk by her. And uh, then Dr. L. Swasti Charan, a charming personality, but also a pillar of tobacco control in the Ministry of External Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Currently holding a Deputy Director General, charge of NCD, charge of uh, oral health program. So I think he is the pillar for all of us uh, who want to say, uh, or voice of all of us who want to say something. And definitely, this particular webinar uh, will go a long way in giving some recommendations to Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. And uh, again. I echo with Miraji on Vikrant. Uh, Dr. Vikrant is our young tobacco cessation professional and has spearheading a lot of courses on tobacco cessation in his institute. And uh, maids uh, from where he belong is famous because of Vikrant Monti now. So I can uh, say that. So and special thanks to a uh, lot of other people, including and my special thank one to uh, Dr. Rana J. Singh. So who is a deputy uh, director in International Union Against TB and Lung Diseases and who was the force behind this webinar? So although he is not in front face, but yes, he was the force behind the uh, conduction of this webinar. And uh, also my special thanks to our resource center for tobacco control, which is uh, like PGI is uh, currently heading this in support of International Union Against TB and Lung Diseases. So. Uh, so we have placed, this is a one uh, short center in which uh, we have placed all the orders and circulars of comment at the state and district level and at the national level and where you can find the authentic information on various uh, issues, whether it is uh, uh, whether it is IEC material or any other thing. So uh, this is in collaboration with the Resource Center for Tobacco Control. So I want to thank uh, Resource Center also. And uh, last but not the least, uh, all the audience, all the enthusiast audience, I could see a lot of comments which has come and uh, I can see the difficulty in asking questions by Dr. Rakesh because he has so many of questions with him yeah. by the for the speakers, but rightly put by Dr. Rakesh Gupta that yes, uh, they, can, uh, they can pose the questions to our eminent speakers whose emails have been shown. So I thank one and all. Uh, and we hope to conduct similar sort of webinars, which is informative uh, for uh, in future also. And last but not the least, these are our team members, uh, members of organizing team, uh, Mr. Arun Verma, who is Director of Finance and Operation uh, Cypher, uh, Dr. Om Prakash, who is Country Coordinator of uh, Global Health Advocacy Incubator, Dr. Nidhi Jaswal, Technical Coordinator in PGI, Mr. Rajiv Chaudhary, Project Coordinator in uh, Bloomberg's Project in PGI, 
a dr radhika rana project officer in health and wellness component project of uh, global health advocacy incubator with pgi mr arshdeep singh project officer ms surbhi sharma media coordinator who has been uh, who has been handling this uh, comment section with you on chats mr saurabh sharma who has done uh, this job of uh, uh, getting everybody live on the uh, facebook through the zoom and uh, then gurleen so who has been handling uh, all those queries and uh, sending you certificates for participation of this webinar so thank you all thank you for this team and uh, thank you dr rakesh gupta so uh, actually he was the one dr rakesh gupta from chandigarh basically from president cipher uh, he was the one again uh, who was behind this uh, for quite some time that we need to conduct this particular webinar and uh, really it was uh, considering the audience i think this webinar was really good so thank you one and all over to dr rakesh so uh, thank you all uh, sourav i think you can uh, stop record i mean uh, uh, on uh, facebook live and we can be on uh, zoom for some time so uh, dr meera ji if you uh, we are only the speakers and the chair persons now on zoom so it is not being streamed live now so any comments no informal talks uh you begin we can talk in form the question is to uh, rakesh gupta from uh, chandigarh during this uh, lockdown how could you find a barber no? i am trying to find one <laughs> <laughs> i need one i need one so badly i also need one, one. need to find at their own home no <laughs> i will have to get vikram to come home and cut my hair <laughs> i can ma'am i can <laughs> please don't go to a barber because there is lot of at least from other countries one of the biggest risk factors is transmission yes. from a that is yeah. why i want vikram to come home and cut my hair <laughs> vikram i did it myself you can see my my haircut no it's for jit very nice it's very nice actually so you can do it with that uh, beard trimmer yes rakesh gupta from jaipur Seems yeah. to have a very, very, very uh, up-to-date uh, haircut, and of course, uh, our uh, Sosti is so handsome in all his hair. You know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who cut his hair. Do <laughs> your wife cut it? Myself. Wife... Nobody has cut it for long. <laughs> That's why I'm feeling very uneasy. That's so why I was intrigued by Rakesh Gupta's short hair. Now, where did he cut his hair? But during the during the workshop, I was always thinking about that. Actually, my dad was in Indian Navy, na. So, so we are used to this kind of haircut. I think, uh, I think Pratima and I, we both need a haircut, right, Pratima? <laughs> uh, <laughs> letting your hair down sometimes is good in these stressful times. So. <laughs> okay. On that note, I will have to leave. Thank you all very much. A special you thanks to Dr. Pratima. Uh, she, she joined just by um, uh, actually call. Uh, in fact, before call, I just sent her a WhatsApp message, and she joined. Thanks a lot, Dr. Pratima. Pratima is excellent. Pratima. She is excellent. So thank you, thank you, Dr. Pratima.